This vlog isn't exactly a cinematic masterpiece. I just wanted to get out of town as I often get the urge to do, and Easter Sunday was one of the few times I acted on that urge. As long as I'm a California resident, I'll probably hold on to some guilt for all of the cliche California classics I've yet to experience. On this day, I plan to see two of those, and like my Paris trip in 2016 or my Las Vegas trip in 2022, I just wanted to know what the hype is about. Here's the first cliche spot of the day, Monterey Bay Aquarium. Since this is a trip I made without over planning, I did have to drive around a bit to find parking, which meant that I was brutally forced to enjoy part of the Monterey Bay Coastal Trail on the way to the aquarium. You'll be happy to know I survived. At least I hope you'd be happy. I'll eventually tell you whether or not I believe the Monterey Bay Aquarium is worth the hype. But in the meantime, I'll tell you that my first impression was the sheer size of the place. I imagine there aren't too many aquariums that have both this footprint and 3 plus levels. Right across the top. 
All right, I'm going to start shuffling my way out. But thank you so much, everyone, for attending the feed. If y'all have any more questions for me, I'm just going to be right on the right-hand side for a few minutes. Feel free to come up to me. I'll be happy to chat. In the meantime, keep enjoying the bat race and having a great time at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Thank you. Don't ask me why I got blinded by sunlight almost every time I tried to take outdoor selfies. Perhaps it's because I took all of them while facing south. If these hanging whale replicas are life-size, then that puts into perspective just how large those things can get. For you filmmakers and photographers, if you want to get a good challenge, then pay a visit to the otters, because their active nature makes it tricky to get decent shots of them. One last minute must see for me were the jellyfish. It will never not be strange to me that something on this planet can take this physical form. Since I believe this section is best enjoyed without background sounds of hyper kids and parents, I'll just go into the review I promised earlier. I promised earlier that I'd tell you whether or not the Monterey Bay Aquarium is worth the hype. If you either haven't been to an aquarium in a while or haven't been to one ever, then it's worth a trip. If you're like me and you've been to an aquarium the past year, it's not going to feel like that much of a novel experience. So I'm not disappointed, but this place didn't exactly make me feel alive. But take that with a huge grain of salt due to the high likelihood that any particular place not making me feel alive is probably more of a me problem, especially considering that this trip was in part conceived from the slight emotional rut I found myself in the past few weeks. By the way, this is the first time I've heard of this town just west of Monterey called Pacific Grove, which appears to be a residential beach community with many of the best views of Monterey Bay and the Pacific Ocean. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I plan to visit two places on this day. The second is Big Sur, or more accurately, the Rocky Creek Bridge. In case you don't want to read this public safety alert, here's what happened. A partial collapse of Highway 1 has stranded some 2,000 people. Caltrans says the highway is closed in both directions at Rocky Creek Bridge, and you can see why. Part of the southbound lane just crumbled away yesterday. The alert stated that only northbound traffic would be allowed through, 
and I was heading southbound. Since I was within 10 minutes of the bridge according to Google Maps, I drove a bit farther out of curiosity. Once I could see a bit of the chaos ahead, I decided this would be a good turnaround spot. Even though this is as close to the bridge as I could reasonably get, this leg of the trip didn't feel like a complete failure since I did still get close enough to see the bridge and to capture some shaky zoom footage of it. The rest of this video is going to be me rambling about some childhood related stuff followed by an impromptu visit to a location that coincidentally also has some ties to my childhood. Whenever I'm out for a drive, I'm slightly taken back to the child version of me who had a weird obsession with roads and geography, particularly California geography. Child Raymond was captivated by the way roads snaked both through and across the California landscape no matter what the terrain. So I guess, shout out to road planners, engineers, and construction workers. Speaking of childhood, I couldn't help but think of one of the novels assigned to me in high school as I drove through Salinas Valley. I am of course talking about John Steinbeck's 1937 novel of Mice and Men, which took place not far from here. I mention this for a couple of reasons. The first is that loneliness is a theme throughout that book, so I felt that mentioning it here is fitting since loneliness is the most recurring easter egg I put into my videos, whether intentionally or unintentionally. And if any video is begging me to break the easter egg fourth wall, it's a video that's shot on Easter Sunday. If you share my aforementioned childhood fascination for roads snaking both through and across landscapes, then you'll probably enjoy the Santa Cruz Highway and its continuous turns through the mountains. Of course, nothing snaps me back to the reality of adulthood more than modern technology. I'm not just talking about the simple button I pressed to start this vehicle when once upon a time I would have needed to turn a key. There's also this. Use the middle two lanes to take the exit toward US 101 North, then merge onto US 101 North. I want you to enjoy this random shot of the clouds battling the sun as I head toward that impromptu third location I promised earlier. So, I've driven by the Candlestick Park exit a number of times, and each time I get the itch to see what that site looks like today, more than a decade after the last San Francisco sports team that played there found a new home. Thank you. 
there used to be a stadium here, a stadium that two of my favorite pro sports teams called home when I was a kid. You may have seen my San Francisco Giants vlogs. You may have seen my San Francisco 49ers vlogs. Those are the current homes of those respective teams. But this spot is the ghost of the home they used to share. Montana. Looking, looking. Throwing in the end zone. The Oakland A's take. Take. I'll tell you what, we're having a great. By the way, it was chilly out here, which is pretty much what Candlestick Park was known for. I mean, it was actually getting a bit uncomfortable to be outside, so it's no wonder why no one ever looked forward to playing here. Speaking of earthquakes, people outside of San Francisco might not believe the city still has double-decker freeways. Here's yet another treat for those who share childhood Raymond's fascination with roads. I've run out of things to show or ramble about, so enjoy the skyline. Oh, and this one final Easter egg in the upper right quadrant of the screen.